very pleased that our uh, rapporteur of a regional steering group for civil registration vital statistics in Asia and the Pacific have uh, organized this uh, side event to the Asia Pacific Forum for Sustainable Development and we're very happy to be able to support this. Um, just a few housekeeping items. Um, if you're not speaking, it would be wonderful if you can keep your mute button on, just do not interrupt anyone. We can also force mute you from here, which we might do if there's some, uh, some background noise. Um, also, please, um, when we are having our presentations, please keep your cameras off. Um, but during uh, questions and answers, it would be wonderful if, if people can keep their cameras on so we get a little bit of a feeling of being in the same room now that we can't do that. Um, we have some really great speakers lined up today and I'm sure that there'll be lots of questions for them. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to use the chat box and in general we will be using the chat box throughout the session for uh, various information about who's speaking and, and links and so on. So please use the chat box and of course if you want to use your various emojis, you're also very welcome to that. For that. Um, but yeah, that is all from me. Um, I would like to introduce our moderator. Jeff Montgomery, um, and he's the Register General and General Manager of Services and Access at New Zealand's Department of Internal Affairs. As well as being responsible for civil registration, his team is also responsible for citizenships and passports. Um, Jeff is also the convener of the Pacific Civil Registers Network, and uh, he was a key member of New Zealand's COVID-19 fatality response. Um, in addition to all of this, Jeff is a busy man. He's also the rapporteur of the Regional Steering Group for Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and the Pacific. And uh, it's this, uh, therefore very happy to give the word to Jeff. Over to you, Jeff. Thank you. Uh, kia ora koutou, talofa lava, kia ora rana, bolivanaka, malo elele, namaste, hello, and warm Pacific greetings to you all from Wellington, New Zealand. Welcome, welcome to Wellington, uh, even though it's only by video. Uh, thank you, Tanya. Um, I want to acknowledge all the work that you've done to advance the sustainable development agenda and the support you've given to the CRV East Regional Steering Group. A well-functioning civil registration system, including birth registration, is a fundamental human right and a cornerstone to inclusive development. Today, we're lucky to hear from three exceptional leaders from our own region who will talk about their experiences with civil registration and vital statistics. First of all, I'd like to introduce Kamini, Kamini Naidu. Kamini is the Administrator General at the Ministry of Justice for the Republic of Fiji and is the Chair of our Regional Steering Group for Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia and the Pacific. She's going to talk to us about the Asian and Pacific Civil Registration and Vital Statistics Decade and where we currently stand on CVRS in the region. Over to you, Kamini. We cannot hear you, Kamini. Kamni, I think you're still on mute. Oh dear. I cut that back, Mark. Are you there, Kamni? Ah, uh, okay, okay, and oh. We seem to have lost Kamni, so oh. I think oh, oh. what we, we might do is we might move on to our next uh, presenter and hopefully Kamni will come back and join us shortly. So our next speaker is uh, Mr. Mohammed Shadul Islam. Uh, he is the Deputy Secretary at the Cabinet Division of Bangladesh. 
He's going to speak to us on the recent developments in Bangladesh with a focus on the civil registration and vital statistics system and how this is supporting the response to and the recovery from COVID-19. Over to you, Mohammed. Uh, welcome to you all in my presentation. Thank you, moderator, Mr. Jeff Montgomery, for giving me the opportunity to present on CRBS in Bangladesh and COVID-19 response before such a learned audience. I would like to cover these following headings, uh, CRBS history in Bangladesh, CRBS coordination mechanism, along with initiatives to strengthen the CRBS system in Bangladesh, and civil registration and ID integration. And finally, I'll put on view Bangladesh government's initiative respond to COVID-19 and how civil registration data used in COVID-19 response. Formal civil registration in Bangladesh is very new. In 2010, Honorable Prime Minister given instruction to develop a national population register. After that, in 2013, CRVS comprehensive has been conducted by the collaboration with SCAP and WHO. On that time, Health Service Department coordinated the CRBS activity up to mid 2014. In September 2014, National CRBS Coordination Mechanism formed. After that, according to the rules of business, Cabinet Division got the responsibilities to coordinate the civil registration activities in Bangladesh. From 2016 to date, Vital Strategies is providing technical support to the Cabinet Division to implement the CRBS system in Bangladesh and Cabinet Division is coordinating all civil registration activities in Bangladesh. Uh, this is the national CRBS coordination mechanism. Bangladesh is a strong national me coordination mechanism to establish a holistic CRBS system. There is a CRBS steering committee headed by the Cabinet Secretary, the highest administrative authority under the Prime Minister. The committee consists of 25 members, including 19 secretaries of ministries for policy support. Another important committee established, which is called the CRBS Implementation Committee to support the steering committee and coordinate the CRBS implementation activities. Along with those two committees, there are another two committees, CRBS Technical Committee and CRBS Legal Review Committee, also part of that coordination mechanism to resolve the technical and legal issues in CRBS implementation. Now, uh, this is the road map of birth and death registration. Birth and death registration began its journey in 1873 under the British rule of the subcontinent. After the independence of Bangladesh, in 2004, uh, Bangladesh repealed that old act and enacted the birth and death registration act 2004 and came into force in 2006. After that, Bangladesh starts birth and death registration, uh, though it was a manual registration, and in 2010, uh, Bangladesh starts piloting the birth and death registration system, which is called BRIS, BRIS. Under the Birth and Death Registration Act 2004, the Office of the Register General was established in 2013 and in operational in 2016. Uh, along with the, that act, there is another rules, Birth and Death Registration Rules 2017, which was amended in 2018. And last year, in 2020, Office of the Register General introduced online birth and death registration information system that is called BDRIS in all over the country. Uh, this is the uh, birth and death registration data, uh, 2019 and 2020 comparison, uh, that shows that uh, uh, birth and death registration uh, rate little bit decrease in 2020 comparing to 2019, but the death rate is slightly increased in 2020 comparing to 2019. In case of marriage and divorce registration, uh, to conduct the marriage and divorce registration in our country, there are several acts and rules exist for religious and interreligious marriages, but there is no law to register the traditional or customary marriage. At present, marriage and divorce registration data are capturing manually. Besides that, Law and Justice Division has taken initiatives to introduce online marriage and divorce registration system. Marriage and divorce data will be integrated on that online marriage and divorce registration system with birth and death registration data to identify the legal age of bride and groom under that initiatives. 
there is another important component of CRBS is cause of death. Bangladesh first time introduced verbal autopsy at the community level to determine the cause of death that occurs in the community. It was in 2017 by the technical support of vital strategies. Approximately 80% death occurred in the community in Bangladesh. On that time, Bangladesh uh, pilot verbal autopsy in 13 sub districts. Uh, up to 2019 and cumulative number is given here and uh, Bangladesh has a plan to scale up verbal autopsy in a nationally representative sample sub districts by 2024. The sample size is 56 sub district. That sample size is determined by the Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics. This is the uh, chart. Uh, Health Service Department analyzed this data, uh, verbal autopsy data, which was from 2017 to 2020. And following, uh, these are the following underlying cause, causes of death for the community death in 13 sub districts. Along with the verbal autopsy, Bangladesh also introduced medical certification of cause of death, MCCOD, to determine the cause of death that occurs in the hospitals at the same time in 2017 and the same support. Later, uh, MCCOD also scaled up in 122 hospitals among them 77 government hospitals and 45 private hospital up to 2000 up to last year in all over the country a community uh, cumulative number of mccod completed uh, near about 2.4 million among them smlo data entry is 0.17 million uh, in 2020 total data entry is 61562 Bangladesh government also has a plan to scale up the mccod in the half of the total government and ho government hospitals at the district and sub-district level by 2020. This is the uh, MCCUD data in uh, two, 2020 data. Here are uh, top 10 uh, underlying causes of death. And Bangladesh has taken uh, the following initiative to strengthen the CRP system. You know, Bangladesh has a high level political commitment for improving CRBS system. Along with that, Bangladesh has prioritized strengthening its CRBS system to ensure everyone in is counted and included in planning and policy decision. You know, Birth and Death Registration Act, under this act, registration of birth and death within 45 days of the event became law. Bangladesh also developed the birth and death registration process map in enterprise ar architecture which includes the notification from health service departments and family planning departments. In recent, necessary steps are taken to include birth and registration related national and international targets, means UNS Cup and SDC target in the, in the administrative level officer of sub-district and district level. Bangladesh government also uh, government taking these necessary steps to increase the demand for birth and death registration. For example, to get the social security support like school type, school stipend, cash benefit program for lactating mother and other conditional cash transfer. Bangladesh government also has taken decision to conduct the inequality assessment. More initiatives have been taken to strengthen the CID based in Bangladesh under the subheading of amending the enforcing legislation. Bangladesh uh, government conducted a legal review on CID based related laws under the support of vital strategies based on that legal review and opinion of the legal review committee office of the register general has taken initiatives to amend the birth and registration rules 2018 and in the improving information and data infrastructure sector all civil registration executive departments follow the bangladesh national digital architecture bnda and citizen core data structure during their data infrastructure preparation. Office of the Register General introduced web-based online birth and death registration information, what I said before, BDRS, where 5,082 register office are conducting online birth and death registration, along with 53 registers office of Bangladesh mission in 42 countries. In case of building capacity, during the COVID-19, Office of the Register General conducted several meetings and training, online training, 
for the district level, sub district level, and union level officials, registrars, and people representative. The number of trainees near about 10,000. Cabinet Division also conducted online workshops, seminar, and sensitization meeting to expedite the CR based activities. More than 12,000 doctors are trained up in MCCOD and SMOLO startup mortality of listing and Anaconda training also get some officials. And in case of uh, linking CRBS with other system, you know, BDRI system linked with DHIS2 means uh, health service department systems and national ID system. BDRS will also link with family planning, EMIS and primary education system along with secondary and higher education system very soon. This is the, uh, another initiative, uh, Kaligans model. You know, Kaligans model, uh, Bangladesh government scaled up uh, in 83 sub district to increase the birth and death registration. Uh, I would like to say a few details of Kaligans model. Kaligans model is an is a comprehensive model where a team of community-based frontline health worker comprises of health assistant and family welfare assistants engaged in union level under the leadership of Upajala Health and Family Planning Officer. They are engaged to undertake this initiative. These health assistant and family welfare assistant help families to apply the birth and death registration and to fill up the application form. After fill up and verified that application, they submit that application to the register to complete the birth and death registration within 45 days. Important thing is that immunization program is linked with this birth and death registration, birth registration. And uh, more features of Kaligas model, the team members who are actually working in this uh, model, they uh, live and work within their community and are therefore well positioned to identify birth and death in their community. The health assistant and family welfare assistants will ensure the families register the birth and birth of newborn babies within 45 days of the date of birth. Important thing is that active engagement with the local leader was the key to the model success. And birth and registration rate is increased in the collaboration with immunization by this model. An ID uh, integration in Bangladesh at present vital events birth and death notification sent to the local register from the community notification from health service health facilities means hospital and uh, family planning facilities is under process integration between uh, bdris and dhs2 is complete but amendment of the rules uh, means birth and death registration rules 2018 is required uh, to declare hospital authority as a register on the other hand fetal death is not included in the registration process in bangladesh uh, marriage and divorce, I discussed about that, and in, in case of adoption, we don't have any law to register the, ad, the adoption as a civil registration. Office of the uh, Registrar General will use unique ID uh, during the birth and uh, birth registration, birth and death registration after the amendment of these rules. At the same time, functional registrar uh, means uh, primary education, secondary and higher secondary education, passport will use that unique ID from ORG. When a citizen become 18 years, he will be a voter and that unique ID will be his national ID. Other e-services are linked with BDRIS and NID to check the eligibility of age and other information through API. Total 407 government services are being provided on MyGov platform, Bangladesh Government Initiative. Bangladesh Bureau of Statistics uh, till now are producing uh, vital statistics on the data collected from their sample units. but uh, Production of vital statistics from civil registration data is under process. They are taking several initiatives to produce vital statistics from civil registration. Uh, among them, uh, two mem uh, memorandum of understanding with ORG and health service departments uh, to produce the vital statistics is under process. This government initiative to respond to the COVID-19 situation. Honorable Prime Minister issued multi-dimensional directives that included a 31 percent guidelines on how to combat the COVID-19 situation. Along with that, Honorable Prime Minister announced 24 incentive packages involving an outlay of TACA, outlay of 14.28 uh, billion USD for social protection and economic recovery, which was 4.4% of GDP. And in the sector of uh, employment, 
the job of about 5 million worker and employees have been protected through continuation of payment of their salaries and allowances. Not a single person in the country was kept unfit during the corona infected times because of free distribution of food, sale of rice at Taka 10 per kilogram and distribution of cash money. To address the crisis and restoring the momentum of the economy by reviving the affected economic activities, Bangladesh adopted an overall short, medium and long term approach formulated based on the four strategic aspects. First strategy, increasing government spending, prioritizing job creation and discouraging unnecessary spending. Second strategy, introducing low interest loans to industries and business enterprises through banking channels. Third strategy is important strategy, expanding the scope of the government's social security programs to protect the low income groups falling below the poverty line and suffering from the temporary unemployment, as well as the people engaged in informal sectors. And final and fourth strategy is increasing money supply in the market. However, cautionary measures are taken to check the inflation. This is the last slide of my presentation. Uh, here's a few examples of how civilization data used in COVID-19 response. Uh, in during the COVID-19 situation, uh, for example, uh, four so only four social pro, uh, social security programs have the beneficiary of 8.8 .8 million, which is 14.27% uh, above than the previous year. Along with that, uh, 7.3 million beneficiary have getting humanitarian assistance in response to COVID-19 through mobile banking. Uh, around 25.4 million families get free rice. All those beneficiaries authentication uh, done by either the birth registration or by an ID. Uh, in case of school stipend, around 8.82 million students of class five get their primary school scholarship under the stipend scheme of primary education. 14 million students mother get their stipend money through mobile banking. And in the secondary and higher secondary level, 2.7 million students get stipend money through mobile banking. All students' identities checked by the their birth certificate. And uh, in COVID-19, to, co to recover the COVID-19, necessary measures have been taken to check the quick purchase of vaccine to combat the COVID-19 pandemic. Total, uh, near about 6 million uh, people complete their COVID-19 vaccine registration using an ID as a verification ID. And EPA program is also running uh, around 83% if he has coverage during the pandemic, NID service have been introduced at the doorstep of citizen. So these are the uh, initiatives government, uh, uh, these are the actually uh, uh, data what how we actually use in our uh, COVID-19 situation. And by presenting this slide, I would like to conclude here my presentation. Thank you all for, for patient sharing. If you have any question, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a very um, insightful presentation. I had the pleasure to visit Bangladesh in 2017, uh, where we helped to establish the Office of the Registrar General and also visit Kalingonj. Um, and it's really pleasing to see the improvements that have been made, but also the great value that civil registration and vital statistics have provided during these COVID times. So, so thank you for a great presentation. I'm now going to try and return uh, back up the agenda to uh, Kamini, uh, who is the Administrator General at the Ministry of Justice in the beautiful Island Republic of Fiji. Kamini, over to you. Thank you, Jeff. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Thank you. Um, apologies for the first uh, attempt. Uh, greetings to everyone who has joined this side event. Thank you for the opportunity to participate um, and present the foundational base uh, product talk of invisibility in COVID times, midterm and mid uh, crisis. And the question is, are we getting everyone in the picture through civil registration? The, um, so I've broken my topic into a, um, a very specific topic of the Asia and the Pacific CRVS decade. Uh, I'm someone who works in the area of civil registration, understand the practical requirements and the importance of um, civil registration and the challenges um, facing in ensuring on-time registration. So in PG, unlike uh, 
Bangladesh, we have um, a time limit of two months uh, for registration uh, from the time the child is born and seven days from any death. Um, so I will lay the foundational uh, basis of the ongoing work in CRPS and the UNS step. Progress made, commitments made, and the impact that has uh, been seen is becoming more difficult to get everyone in the picture in these COVID-19 uh, times. Jeff, you have to tell me if I go a bit fast. I have a habit of talking fast. So, um, doing well. thank you. Uh, thank you. On the first um, uh, slide, so I have, I have what it's. Um, thanks to Tan and the team for. Um, supporting me on this presentation. So what is civil registration wider static? See, I thought it was important to mention this is because I mean during this COVID times we have to understand how important C CRVS is. I mean there was a lot of impact of uh, a COVID um, that sort of affected uh, civil registration and I understand that in some countries there is, it's not considered as, as essential service whereas in some countries it's an essential service so according to the UN civil registration and vital statics is continuous permanent compulsory and universal recording of occurrence and characteristics of wider events of the population in accordance with the law so it's continuous and permanent because it requires an agency like a birth, deaths, and marriage registry in Fiji, uh, whose operation is not limited by effect of time. You have to make sure that you, uh, your services are available and people have access to your service. And you, you, we are the civil registration administration through the civil registration as a source of vital statistics and of civil registration law. So the law, I mean, empowers us and, and, and ensures that, that there's uh, a timely registration of birth. But the problem is, getting people to come to the bird in BM office to register on time. And it's permanence of the system is a requirement for continuity of registration and wider studies data, which is necessary for a meaningful understanding of both current figures as well as trends in the wider statistics measures. So essentially recording every event is also an opportunity to provide the most accurate, complete and timely statistics on the health and demographics of the population and to maintain a national civil registry or a population uh, database. So we have in most of the countries, you know, statistics department, and it's very important that the initial registration is accurate and people are given access. So come what may, any pandemic or what may, I think we need to make it make sure that our services are readily available so that people are not affected or impacted by you know, any, any pandemic and not be able to register. So it's a recording of vital events, continuous permanent compulsory, and has to be universal. Next slide, please. So, my apologies. So, CRBS is fundamentally about a person's legal identity and the right to recognize the person before the law and formal relationship with the state. So, if you're not on the BDM register, you're not in the picture. You, you're non-existent. You, you're, you don't have a legal identity. It provides individual with documentary evidence, for example, birth certificate to prove their age, family relations, and, and nationality. So our core function in, in the BDM office in Fiji is we have a huge number of requests for a preprint of a birth certificate. Uh, we have a number of people coming in requesting for same. And we have to make sure that our service is available uh, and, and, and people have, you know, can access it anywhere they are. And it's important uh, in, in because it's it's uh, it gives them the ability to access essential service like the healthcare, education, social protection. And and uh, these also have implication of other ensuring other rights and empowering activities such as political participation, recourse, justice, nationality, property ownership, um, using, you know, banking services. So. At the end of the day, we have to make sure that our services are available. Um, so the pandemic has disrupted progress in some of these uh, civil registration system in, in many countries of the region, and it has brought a number of lessons that countries need to be mindful of as they buy bill forward. Civil registration offices need to work towards building disaster resi resilient uh, systems, system that can continuously, you know, continue to operate through different kinds of crises. Uh, it requires countries to develop disaster management plans that anticipate different scenarios that plan forward as to how to deal with such scenarios. So the pandemic has highlighted the importance of digitizing civil registration processes like New Zealand and Australia. I mean, I've been to New Zealand office and you can register birth online anywhere, anytime. And uh, uh, and countries that have managed to do this, you know, this end-to-end -end electronic process for notification, 
registration certificate handle this pandemic much better as compared to those whose processes are manual and specifically requiring members of the public to present be present at the office. Establishing um, a strong uh, mechanism of collaboration with other stakeholders is really permanent. So like in Fiji, we have the CVAR, CRVS committee. We have all these relevant stakeholders on in the committee. So, and I mean, we meet, we try and meet on a regular basis and we discuss issues and, and see how we can get everyone in the picture. So uh, as we saw during the pandemic, some countries only services related to uh, um, uh, essential services were like open, like Ministry of Health was considered uh, essential, but CRVS and civil registration is as important as um, any other service. Uh, so we need to have a very strong collaboration with uh, uh, with Ministry of Health because that's where that's the source of data for Fiji. So we would not register at birth unless and until the person has a notification of birth from the Ministry of Health. So we have to have a very strong collaboration with the Ministry of Health officials. Um, so. Uh, the national, the importance of national, like I mentioned, CRVS committees is, is very important within the regional action framework. And the pandemic has provided a great opportunity to most demonstrate the importance of civil registration systems, especially in providing holistic data about death. And it's considered um, crucial that all countries take advantage of the opportunity to showcase the value of CRVS system and engage government in investing more towards a stronger uh, system. Um, so the commitments that has been made in the uh, Asia Pacific, uh, you know, before the 2030 agenda, in which a uh, ministerial declaration refers to the post-2015 uh, agenda, the, the idea is leaving no one behind and getting everyone in the picture, which is, of, of course, two sides of the same inclusive uh, story. As CAP and CRVS partners are active in discussions on the SGD uh, agenda uh, indicator framework, leading to multiple indicators referring to birth and death registration completeness, the uh, regional steering group for CRVS in Asia and the Pacific had repeatedly uh, reiterated the need for CRVS to be improved in support of national SGDS, uh, SGD sorry, uh, implementation. Um, so we have a number of indicators uh, and number of targets that we have set for ourselves, which is target 16.9 by 2030, provide legal identity for all through birth registration. And 16.9.1, proportion of children under five age whose birth have been registered uh, 17 target 17.18 by 2020, which should increase significantly the availability of high quality, timely, reliable data, disintegrated by income, gender, race, ethnicity, uh, migratory status, disability, geographic location, and other characters referred to the national context. And so indicator 17.8.2 says a proportion of sustainable development indicators produced at the national level with full disintegration with when relevant to the target in accordance with the fundable principles of official statistics. So we have a number of, uh, I won't repeat everything, but we have a number of targets that we have set. And these targets are to ensure that we have, you know, built a strong CRVS system uh, essential for planning and implementing the SDG goals, which we have uh, committed to, um, you know, in, related to social inclusion, health, education and good governance. So we, at the end of the day, we have, you know, good, accurate uh, statistics so that decisions can be uh, made. Um, next slide, which is number five, is uh, uh, legal identity is insisted in target 16.9 is a, uh, of goal 16 for the global agenda target commits to achieving universal legal identity for all persons, including birth registration. So 17.9, goal 17 of the agenda further recognizes civil registration system as a fundamental infrastructure for measurement. Countries are called upon to achieve universal birth registration or at least 80% completeness of death registration. And, and data collected to the CVR CRV system, number of beds and deaths of, uh, for the numerator and total beds and deaths for the denominators are essential for measuring those um, target. So in this slide, I'll, meet, I'll mention a bit of, um, of Fiji's context. So in Fiji, like I mentioned, is con the BDM services is considered essential. And um, I'm on to slide six, sorry. Right. So it's BDM services considered essential in Fiji and there is uh, and there was no disruption to us providing the services to the general public. But I understand there are countries where it's not essential, so there may have been uh, access issues, uh, especially if those uh, systems are not online. And I, um, I, I understand that would have a very um, huge impact on the CRV system and uh, also uh, a wider gap ensuring that everyone does get into the picture. So. Um, I, I'm sure our countries have, uh, you know, ways and means and measures of uh, combating that so that no one is left behind. Next slide. 
So in um, 2014, in recognition of the role civil registration and vital statistics play in, import, in supporting development efforts, government and their relevant board uh, shows a Society partners came together at the 2014 Ministerial Conference on CRVS in Asia and Pacific to concentrate efforts on improving CR systems. Together, they articulated the shared vision for the region that is, by 2024, all people in Asia and the Pacific benefit from universal and responsive CRVS system that facilitate the recognition of their rights and support good governance, health, and development. So this is this is why you know with civil registration is so important we have made a commitment and we have to make sure that we get everyone in the picture and by 2024 we have to have uh, you know done what we are you know what we have planned to do what we have done in what we've uh, uh, worked out through our crvs committees the uh, whole structure of making sure that our crc crv system is you know at the end of the day is is working and ensuring that there is civil registration there is Birth registration, that that uh, registration and all vital events of a person's life is registered, and that's a commitment made, and we have to stick to it. Um, so, government and development partners have endorsed this regional election framework on civil registration and vital state in Asia and the Pacific to accelerate, accelerate, sorry, and focus efforts to achieve the shared vision. The implementation of the regional election framework is guided by the steering. Regional steering group for CRVS in Asia and the Pacific, which includes 22 countries and 18, eight, sorry, eight development uh, partners. So the area regional ambition for the decade goal one is that universal registration of births, deaths, and other vital events, and goal two, all individuals are provided with legal documentation of civil registration of births, deaths, and other vital events as necessary to claim identity. And goal three, mentioned before, accurate, complete, and timely vital statistics, so that you. I may, are able to make a, a good decision based on the statistics that's available. So supporting the vision of the regional steering group on CRVS, we have 30 members. We have represented by, you know, and, um, Ministry of Health registrars, partners across the ESCAP region. And we are the custodian of the CRVS decade. We have to make sure that the targets, the, the visions and whatever it's that comes under this decade is implemented. And we are working towards this common goal of ensuring that all, you know, everyone gets in the picture. Responsible for implementing the CRVS decade and and how lots more. So we have, uh, most of us have submitted our midterm uh, uh, questionnaire review that was done. And uh, the team in SCAP has uh, very kindly has summarized our and come up, came up with a report which has been circulated. Um, so they're acting upon, you know, commitment to implement the regional ex action framework. Member states also have strived to improve their civil registration and vital statistics and has thus, thus realized the shared vision that we have. Uh, we have reached the mid -term, uh, midpoint of the decade and have agreed in the regional action framework. This is the moment to look at progress made since the beginning of the decade and identify remaining barriers to achieve the shared vision of universal and responsive, responsive CRVS systems. Uh, Midterm review, like I said, was progress was conducted. Was progress in improving uh, CRVA. So we have in the next two slides, uh, you can see the um, progress that has been made. Um, um, there has been rapid improvements in birth and death registration in the region, uh, but nevertheless, efforts are, need to be maintained and even accelerated to as we want to reach our targets by 2024, especially for um, death registration. So because it says universal, it means 100%, not 99%. And assessments of qualities, inequalities experienced by subgroups of the region are needed to make sure that everyone um, gets in the picture. The second slide is also showing the death registration completeness. And this is um, uh, the team at ESCAP has done a, a report analyzing all the questionnaires that were um, submitted. So the objectives of the ministerial conference on CRVS, which is happening soon, celebrating achievements during the first half of the CRVS decade, highlight necessity of CRVS to legal identity, emphasize how CRVS is instrumental for achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, and to focus on the impact, importance of CRVS system in, the res, in response to pandemic and the recovery um, from COVID-19. So this conference, second edition, is happening 16 to 19 November, and um, there's a number of expected outcomes, participants and preparation is underway, and hopefully we will meet um, on 16 to 19 November. So with that said, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity, and I know that uh, 
how important CRBS is, uh, CRBS is. I mean, I'm working in a BDM office and ensuring that, you know, you have on-time registration, ensuring that people do come in and register. It's not easy. Sometimes people don't take it, take it for granted. Uh, but it's very important that they do register and it's important that we and that they have a good system that allows people to come and register and not wait for too long and get this done. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, thank you very much, Carmen. And, and thank you for your leadership of the Regional Steering Group. It's really important that we have practitioners like yourself uh, leading this work um, and the civil registration system in Fiji uh, is certainly uh, a, a leading um, a leading example of excellence in, in the region. So thank you for your for your leadership. I'm now going to uh, move on uh, and introduce our next speaker, who is Mr. Benwell Lenge of uh, the director of the Department of Civil Registry and Vital Statistics uh, in another beautiful Pacific country, uh, Vanuatu. He's going to talk about the new national ID system in Vanuatu uh, and how it's linked with civil registration and vital statistics. But before he starts speaking, I believe there's going to be a short video uh, about Vanuatu that uh, we can view. Hopefully the video is on its way. If not, you can, enjoy, you can enjoy the sunset of Wellington over my left shoulder while we're waiting for the video. We're working on it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Registration in Vanuatu was started by the two condominiums, uh, the British and the French. And uh, until we got independent in 1980, it was uh, done by the government, where we for the government from the Department of uh, Civil Service. Uh, that's where we uh, did the registrations manually. Uh, the registrations were done manually until uh, 2002, uh, where we uh, start to enter the information into the system. That's where we use the database that was developed by. Uh, one of the uh, volunteers in Australia by the name John Love. So, in fact, uh, John started the development of the database in 2000 until 2002, where we started entering the data into the database. And we're still using the database until now. Registration is uh, done manually, it's still done manually, and where we, people used to come forward and uh, we collect the information, fill the form, and end it into the system. Uh, until uh, 2008, where we had an MOU with Education and Health, where uh, most of the registrations are done by uh, uh, headmasters in schools, uh, especially to capture the uh, students in schools and also the health facilities uh, to capture the newborn babies. So uh, that's where the registration, uh, we increase the registration from after the MOU, uh, the registration just increased from there until uh, uh, we did the verification with the uh, electoral office, that's where uh, we also captured many unregistered uh, defunds into the system. The importance of having uh, national ID cards, uh, I think that's one of um, the important issues that we raise during our campaign, uh, encouraging people to register and to have a birth certificate. I think the, the importance of uh, having a national uh, ID card or birth certificate is also to to actually say where you belong. Uh, so if you got a the national ID or birth certificate, it tells where you come from. Uh, otherwise, if you by law, if you don't register, they will be classifying you as maybe someone from other space. 
the benefit of having a national identity is uh, to make sure you access the services that the government is providing, uh, such as uh, you now we are connected with the uh, election where you can vote using your identity. And uh, also you can access other services such as traveling. Uh, everyone needs to confirm your identity before you travel. And even to access other services like uh, banks uh, to know who you are. And uh, other services again, other services as well that the government is uh, providing. Every event must come forward to have uh, them registered, to have an identity. And uh, not only that, so that we can also count uh, the number of people uh, that we have uh, when we register and uh, issue the identity. So it is important for every nuance uh, to come forward, uh, all the parents to take the responsibilities and register the children in order to have their identity. You, me, everybody together, we make Vanuatu. I can register and vote with my ID. Me, my village, my tribe, my island, my Vanuatu. Life is easy with my ID. My ID card, my food. I am me, you are you, together we are Vanuatu. I'm sorry, uh, Vanuatu, you're on mute. Yes, uh, actually, I just. So, thanks everyone. Um, hello from Vanuatu, and thank you for the opportunity to uh, to present. I think the, the short video we've just uh, seen basically summarize the progress that we have and also maybe the challenges that uh, you know um, we've been encountering uh, ever since we started with the, the registrations. Um, but my, my presentation will, will, will come on the national ID um, side of things. Uh, I, I believe uh, one not is one of the best countries in the region to sort of uh, roll out the use of uh, national IDs. Um, we are we are a very small small um, small office, um, despite the fact that you know uh, we, uh, our office sort of established way back in uh, during the trend uh, regulations. So we have uh, British and. Um, France who have actually um, looked after us and they are the ones who have established our office and this year I'm proud to say that we are about 50 years uh, of the service that the civil status has been providing. Um, but uh, like I mentioned we have a small office but we, we do have our own challenges. Uh, um, a population of around 300,000 people, um, some of them have yet to uh, receive the services that we are providing. So I think um, to uh, building on from the video uh, presentation that uh, we just gone through, um, we, we, we need to acknowledge um, the transition from manual to um, uh, digitization of the, of the records. Um, recently, uh, the the technologies that uh, we have uh, enable us to uh, um, have a database in place, and uh, in doing so, we we, we are able to um, eliminate other issues uh, such as you know, duplication of records, and this is something that we're still working on. Um, as you know, uh, as everyone knows that you know any register, a database can always um, help in maintaining. Accurate um, uh, records of the events that uh, we are mandated to uh, to record, and in this case, we have the marriage, deaths, and the beds. Um, at the moment, we are only concentrating on um, on, on the Vanuatu citizens, even though in the in the records we do have records of uh, you know other people who are non-citizens. Um, 
we also um, uh, it is also important to, to point out that at the moment our focus is mainly on the on the bed registration. Um, I think from from the uh, presentation that Kani provided uh, earlier, there is some challenge that we still have uh, regarding other registration for marriages and and deaths. And uh, we also believe that as soon as we we have some improvement in the bed registration then we should be able to see those uh, improvements as well in the in the marriages and, and the deaths because they the, the records are linked. So um, as um, the, as you have learned from the video, we 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 have a strategy in place to to be able to to capture everyone. So basically we we tend to allocate the registration of uh, babies or young young uh, children to the to the hospitals, and then later on, if they miss the hospitals, they go to school. Then that is when the schools will be able to to register them. Um, and if they still miss miss out on the school uh, during the school, then you know that's when we we, we come in. But um, like I said, it, it is a strategy, and it is something that we'll need to. We'll need to review because a lot of issues also contribute to the to the to the efforts. For example, all the schools need to have um, access to the system. All the schools need to have access to some form of network to be able to register those uh, those uh, make those new registrations. So these are some of the challenges that we still face, and uh, I'm glad that you know um, we have the um, support from our, our stakeholders, a relevant. Um, partners from within the government and those uh, non-government organizations, they're able to help us improve uh, the coverage of, of, the, of the registrations. And then in, um, um, in fact, we have some, we did have some numbers that uh, um, sort of give us some idea of how much we have covered so far. And in 2014, we, I think from one of the reports, it highlighted uh, that there is an increase of uh, babies, uh, children under one, from 35% to 57%. And then there's another report estimating um, about 14% that have yet to be registered. Uh, also from the UNICEF report, they also estimated about 80% 80 of the population that have had their births uh, uh, registered. And uh, the, the summary, the table there is basically what we have at the moment. Um, I think, um, as you can see from the system, we we have about 369 uh, sort of records, and then 50% uh, so slightly higher male male proportion that had that have had their beds registered compared to. Uh, to the female uh, population. So out of this um, um, bed registration, uh, we were able to, to um, come up with a national ID. So basically the national ID is the source, uh, bed registration is the source for the national ID. And um, way back in 2017 was the first time we've ever received a uh, national ID cards and basically to address the issue of um, good governance. And um, uh, as of this, towards the end of last year, we were able to install uh, national ID um, machines in all the provinces so people are able to have access to the printing and get their um, um, IDs uh, issued. And uh, about uh, the features that uh, can be seen or, um, on the ID card, uh, we have, of course, a photo, photo of yourself, and then a QR code that is um, um, also part of the ID. And um, we also included a unique design, uh, a gilash and a micro text that will probably make it hard for people or anyone to sort of copy. We also install a, a tactile impression of the coat of arms, and uh, on top of that, we are able to laminate the card itself. So 
the whole idea here is to make it, you know, really almost impossible for anyone to 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 copy or to duplicate um, any of the cuts that have uh, been issued from from this office. And then we have that uh, data protection issue. Um, of course, as it, as of uh, today, we we still have uh, challenge. We have, we have yet to have a legislation in place, but uh, we are we are currently working with the expert expect to review some of the legal frameworks surrounding the the national ID. And but in the meantime, we 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 are able to address the issue with the use of um, um, data. Uh, uh, that they sign an agreement on, on the conditions on how to use um, um, the system that um, that covers the, the national ID. So hopefully uh, towards the end of this year, we should be able to see um, a much more uh, up-to-date um, uh, legal framework. And, uh, you know, just to give some assurance to people that your, your information is safe and that anything that is done regarding the national IDs within the within the within the law of the country. So as of today about 50% of the population is estimated to already have um, an ID. But uh, we are we, we will continue to improve the numbers. Um, like I said as soon as um, the numbers of registration you know uh, new registration appeared and we will we will issue the national ID straight away. Uh, so it depends on the registration uh, efforts as soon as we have the registration and then we should be able to uh, provide them also the, the national ID card. So in this year we we continue to you know um, provide uh, uh, service and but at the same time uh, making sure that uh, uh, the information that is collected uh, um, up to date, uh, correct. So there has been two efforts of um, uh, field um, field uh, field work for, uh, since last year, and um, the the efforts were able to also address um, issues of um, you know damaged documents, lost documents. We have uh, one of this one of the uh, is the most vulnerable uh, um, uh, country. Uh, country in terms of disaster, we tend to have lots of disaster. And last year, we, all, we had a category five cyclone, which uh, came to the northern part of the country. So we've been experiencing people, you know, losing their uh, documents. So this field operation basically was to cover the, the areas, uh, do the registration, as, and as well as uh, providing the opportunity to to reissue or the replace documents, bed certificates, and and national ID cards. So basically what we, we apply a lot the different uh, methods in, in doing the, the verification. Uh, we have a team of um, officers who go out in the field recruiting volunteers and before doing that we had you know training of trainers for them to go and supervise uh, the field the field work. Uh, we also apply different um, ways of reaching out uh, to the communities using posters, uh, Facebook, SMS, radio communications, and um, we also apply to also have uh, different toolkits. For example, we have uh, tablets, um, power banks, of course, to help out in making sure that tablets don't run out during the field. Um, we have the registration forms. Uh, even we use the, the COBO, COBO form, COBO collect forms. So those are different ways of making sure that uh, you know the collection is is um, is is good and and that you know we're able to trace uh, with, to to make a good coverage. And so far we've collected over 40,000 40, forms from uh, using the COBO form. And uh, out of which 20,000 are totally new um, bed regist registrations. So I think that's that's basically what I wanted to cover. But uh, in summary, um, 
what I've just mentioned is basically to highlight the fact that um, um, civil registration is is the foundation of uh, for the establishment of legal identity, at least in our case, because without a birth registration, we're not able to uh, issue that national identity, ID card, sorry. And also the strengthening of uh, a civil registration and viral statistics and integrating um, civil registration with national ID, ID system, it will it can contribute towards ensuring that everyone is registered and counted. And I think government must ensure that there is equal access uh, to opportunities for all and empower the people to build their lives as they wish, one person, one unique identity, one one vote. Um, proper civil registration and vital statistics can be an accelerator in the, in the, in the achievement of uh, key SD, SDGs and key in building back post-COVID-19 or post-disaster with essential and basic um, uh, services for whether it, in terms of relief supplies and responses, school re-enrollment, access to health and services and start building patient records or using national ID to establish post-COVID-19 immunization re register, which is likely to be a case for one or two, and all, that, all the financial services. Um, and in all, we've been making sure that we are not leaving um, anyone behind. So, Chef, I think that's basically my, my present presentation and I'll be happy to uh, welcome any uh, comments if or uh, questions from anyone. Thank you. Right. Uh, thank, thank you very much, Ben. Um, that was a fabulous video at, at the start. There were a number of comments in the chat about uh, the fabulous video. I'm really looking forward to the border being opened between New Zealand and Vanuatu so I can come and visit you. Thank you also for highlighting the essential link between civil registration uh, and, and national ID cards. And I think often this is um, overlooked, not only the link between birth registration, but the equally important link between death registration and closing off uh, national IDs when a person passes away. So, so far we've heard from um, three civil registrars who are my favourite kind of people. Um, however, civil registration or CR is only half of the CRVE story. Our next speaker is Ms. Nazaria Binti Bahuruddin. She is the Deputy Chief Statistician of the Department of Statistics in Malaysia. She's also the Vice Chair of our Regional Steering Group for Civil Registration and Vital Statistics in Asia. Uh, thank you, Jen. Uh, a very good afternoon to everyone. Uh, today, I will be sharing Malaysia's experience on the destruction of civil registration and vital statistics in Malaysia due to COVID-19. And um, next, uh, my pre presentation will cover five areas. Uh, there is the CRVS system in Malaysia, CR CRVS process flows in Malaysia, the Malaysian Government Movement Control Order, and the fourth is on disruption of civil registration and vital statistics, and uh, last and not least, the way forward. Next, please. Uh, in terms of the governance, uh, in Malaysia, we have the steering committee checked by the Secretary General of the Ministry of Home Affairs. And the second one, we also have the technical committee checked by the Director General of National Registration Department, NRD, uh, basically on the registration issues. And at the same time, uh, in terms of uh, vital stats, we also have a technical working group which covers five main areas. That is the maternal mortality, under five mortality, stillbirth mortality, COVID-19 mortality, and verbal autopsy. At the same time, uh, we also have an interagency planning group for four areas, that is the vital statistics, cause of death statistics, marriage and divorce statistics, and population statistics, which uh, the members comprise of all data providers and stakeholders. And uh, the uh, main term of reference is to validate and endorse the statistics on the respective areas 
Internally, we have the publication committee, uh, whereby uh, we uh, endorse the publication of the vital statistics. Next, please. Uh, here is the, the overall process flow of the CRVS system, starting on the left side with the process uh, of which uh, the various stakeholders yeah, providing the data on live birth, death, uh, fetal death, marriages, divorces, annulment, uh, separation, ado adoption, legitimation, and also recognition. And the data flows through the National Registration Department, which is uh, whereby NRD is a centralized agency for civil registration. And the agency provides individual legal identity, such as the national IDs, uh, and birth and death certificate. And they verify the ID for the issuance of passports by the Immigration Department. And uh, the information from NRD flows to the Department of Statistics Malaysia, whereby we process and disseminate the vital statistics in Malaysia. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, moving on. Next slide, please. Uh, here is the process flow of birth registration. And we have the situation of birth uh, uh, at health facilities as well as outside health facilities. And uh, the information of registration goes to the Medical Care Information System or SMRP at the Ministry of Health. And the information flows to the National Registration Department and uh, last and not least to the Department of Statistics, whereby, as I mentioned earlier, we produce the vital statistics. That is the process uh, as is yeah, during uh, the COVID-19. Next, uh, we have the process flow during the pandemic. I think this is similar to the process that I just presented just now. But here, I would like to highlight that during the pandemic, uh, parents and informants are given extension of 90 days uh, to obtain uh, their birth certificate from the National Registration Department. So here we can see that we we were we were facing some uh, delays in terms of registration, and during uh, the pandemic also, as I mentioned just now, we have the records at the SMRP at Ministry of Health, but nonetheless, uh, Dosum do not does not have the access to the SMRP system at Ministry of Health. So what we did is uh, during the pandemic, we realized if we could get the access from this system, uh, we can have uh, much more information at our hand. So we have written to the Ministry of Health and we also have the approval uh, letter for sharing of the information directly from the MSRP at the Ministry of Health. Moving on, um, we also have, next slide please. We also have the process flow of death registration, similar to what we have for birth. Only uh, for the situation of death, we have reports yeah, at health facilities as well as outside health facilities. Uh, and outside the health facilities, it is being handled by the police. But both uh, information flows through the National Registration Department and then only to the Department of Statistics Malaysia. We don't have direct access to the system. Moving on. So, next slide, please. Uh, during the COVID-19, uh, we also uh, request the same access yeah, to the SMRP at NOH uh, system, uh, also uh, as well as for the death uh, uh, records. Yeah. So, uh, at the moment, the department and the Ministry of Health is in the at the level of. Uh, uh, discussing eh, uh, the modus operandi in terms of sharing the information. Okay, next. Next, please. Uh, this is the process flow of marriage registration. I just want to mention that there are two sources. One is for the Muslim population, where, whereby we got the information from the State Islamic Religious Department, and for non Muslim we get the information from the National Registration Department. This is the current process flow of marriage registration. Next, moving on. Uh, similarly, we also have uh, the same, the same uh, process flow for divorce. 
uh, from for Muslim and non-Muslim. For Muslim, uh, we get the information from the Department of Sharia, Judiciary uh, Malaysia, and from the non-Muslim uh, comes from uh, the National Registration Department, uh, as well as the from uh, the solemnite. The certificate comes from the Civil High Court. Yeah. Okay. Next, uh, I would like. Uh, this is the, the workflow eh, the, uh, of the wider statistic compilation at the Department of Statistics uh, from the start when we receive the records and the checking that and the coding that has been ha, that has to be undertaken up to the tabulation and the production of the statistics yeah whereby we have the interagency planning group as well as the technical working group uh, where we trash uh, all the uh, relevant issues uh, uh, arising from the data and we get the consensus yeah, from all the stakeholders uh, prior to the release of the information uh, on stat uh, vital statistics. The disruption uh, on vital statistics uh, during the pandemic, yeah, uh, we have the, uh, the workflow is still the same and thus we have uh, problems in terms of getting uh, the data as we have been getting the data as uh, prior to the pandemic and some of us has to work from home and only 30% at, in the office uh, within the limit of the capacity as uh, determined by the government and all uh, of our meeting has to be done online uh, in, uh, including in terms of verifying the data and as uh, due to, to the problems that we face or the disruption during uh, the pandemic our second quarterly demography publication is not published on time. Uh, it is delayed uh, from August yeah, 2020 to November 2020. Okay, next. Uh, this is just to show the, the faces of the uh, movement control order imposed uh, by the government, whereby we have a restriction and uh, regist uh, registration of vital statistics uh, is not included uh, or it's not listed as essential services and the office is closed for some time and reopened uh, I think in May. Okay, next. Uh, okay, as I mentioned just now, uh, birth and death registration is not included in essential service yeah, during the MTO and the counters are closed from mid-March to mid-May and only available later uh, by appointment and uh, I, as I mentioned uh, just now in the earlier slide, uh, parents are given uh, an extension yeah, up to 90 days for registration of birth as well as for the uh, uh, informants yeah, in terms of death registration. And uh, for DOSM, uh, we have only access to consolidated and verified records at the National Registration Department but not the raw records yeah, at, at the system in MOH as well as at the Royal Malaysian Poly Police for the death registration. Okay, uh, the closure of the registration during MCO led to under-reporting of data and under-reporting of events happened uh, after 18 March 2020. Prior to COVID-19, the average monthly uh, registration of birth is around 35,000, deaths 14,000, non-Muslim marriage about 4,000 and divorce 1,000. However, during COVID-19, the average uh, numbers declined due, due to late registration. In terms of Muslim marriage and divorce data, uh, they are not affected uh, since Dossum only received the data annually from the State Religious Department. However, these events yeah, uh, are not allowed yeah, during certain periods of the MCO whereby uh, uh, the services are totally closed and uh, marriage and divorce statistics, are, we expect it to decline in 2020 as compared to the previous years. In terms of registration without uh, the issuance of birth and death certificates, it can be done at Ministry of Health and Royal Malaysia Police, but Dawson, uh, as I mentioned just now, do not have access to the systems at Ministry of Health as well as at the Royal Malaysia Police. We only can obtain the data from the National Registration Department. Next. Next, please. Next, please. 
Okay, this is uh, the records yeah, on uh, on uh, what we receive yeah, from the National Registration Department, the live birth data from January to December 2020, as well as the previous data for 2018 and 2019. If I could uh, point out to the last column on the total for the month of March, April and May, uh, we can see here that uh, supposedly, we should receive around 35,000 yeah, uh, records on birth registration, but for March, we only received about 25,000. And in April, with the total uh, lockdown, we received only 862 records, and supposedly around the same numbers, or in uh, 2018 and 2019, around 40,000, uh, 42,000 records. Yeah. And for May, we only received 37,000, uh, whereby the figures should be around 39,000 to 41,000. So we have the disruption there, where we, uh, whereby we are not receiving uh, the full number of registration uh, because of the closure of the National Registration Department counters, as well as the 90 days extension uh, given uh, to parents and the informants uh, for death. And later, we, we see that the number uh, has increased, uh, but that, and we can see that actually when we receive it uh, in June, for instance, uh, the numbers belong also uh, covers late registration for the other months uh, from March, uh, April, and May. Okay, next. Okay, this is uh, the figures for that, and we can see similar situation whereby uh, the Department of Statistics are receiving lower numbers of records yeah, uh, from the National Registration Department. Uh, for instance, for March, we only received around 9,700, of which uh, the normal figures for 2018 and 19 is about 15,000. Uh, the same goes for April, we only received about 10,000 and May 16,000. And from May onwards, we can see that the records that were provided to us also include for the previous month. Yeah? Okay. Next, uh, okay. Uh, for Dawson, we continue to produce the vital statistics report in 2020, the quarterly report as well as the annual report. But in the absence of complete and timely data, Dawson uh, has to estimate uh, the data for the registration of birth and death. And in uh, doing the estimate, we use the 10 years time series data and we also take into account the current situation whereby during the pandemic last year, uh, because of the close down, yeah, the movement control order, uh, we see that rate of road accident has dropped by nearly 70%, uh, where the average is around 4 to 5 deaths daily uh, versus uh, 380 deaths per month and 12 deaths per day during 2010 and 2019. Uh, practically, we have to estimate the third month of every quarter, but due to the pandemic and the late registration, the estimation has also to be applied to the second month. At this point in time, the quarterly data are not revised and considered as preliminary data, and during the annual data, we will revise the data accordingly. Okay, uh, moving forward, uh, we will work uh, on to improve the cooperation with all the data providers to strengthen the process as well as the data access and data sharing. And at NRD, uh, they are already mobilized their mobile registration counter services yeah, uh, to the hard to reach population, especially in the rural areas. And in 2018, they managed to settle 22,260 cases out of 23,256 cases. Yeah? Uh, considering the importance of accurate and real-time data, Dawson will also re review its capacity to, pre to produce causes of death quarterly or monthly instead of annually. And for the information of all members, uh, Dawson will also conduct the uh, mixed survey for the first time this year and will include the questions on under-reporting of rate of birth and death in the questionnaire. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Nazaria. It was uh, 
It's always interesting to see the wonderful statistics that organisations such as yours produce, even for somebody like me who can barely count at times. So thank you very much for making it uh, so clear for us all. Now it's time for questions. Uh, there's been a number of questions in the chat box, uh, and perhaps just to um, start things off, there, there was a question for, for the entire group, I think, and that is, what is the key factor which has paved the way for the improvements you've seen in civil registration and vital statistics in your country? So perhaps if we'll we'll go to each of the speakers uh, one by one, perhaps I could ask the speakers to all turn their cameras back on so we can see uh, their lovely faces. Uh, and perhaps I'll start with, uh, with Mohammed because he's got his camera on first. What do you think was the one main thing that's led to your success? Yeah, thank you, uh, uh, Jeff, uh, for that question. Uh, you know, uh, we have a uh, strong political commitment as well as uh, Bangladesh uh, adopted different development policy planning like 8th five year planning, Vision 2041, uh, where there have a specific targets to achieve the, within that uh, within the time frame, which inspired and uh, motivated us to implement our best practices, as well as uh, supporting from uh, donor agencies means vital strategy. They are supporting a lot in our country uh, to implement this best practice and uh, introduce new uh, best practice in our country. Uh, I hope uh, I could uh, give you answer to that question. Thank you. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, ben and Vanuatu, what do you think was the, the main thing that's led to your success? Uh, you're on mute. Friend. Yes, thank you. So I was going to say that, like like uh, Bangladesh, it's it's a combination of uh, of uh, different uh, efforts. So acknowledging the political will, of course, and then we have um, uh, stakeholders, uh, the, our partners, and I think more the most important one is the recognition of the work that um, uh, you know CRVS is is doing. So with, with, uh, I'm pretty sure that you know all the background work that we've been doing uh, to promote the CRVS uh, uh, really contribute to, to this um, to this progress or the developments that we are we are seeing uh, nowadays. Mm. Thank you very much, Ben. And and uh, you mentioned a political commitment gives me an opportunity to advertise the ministerial conference, which hopefully will be happening in November this year. So that's an opportunity for all of us to encourage our ministers and our senior officials to attend uh, that conference, which focuses on uh, civil registration and vital statistics and their contribution towards the global development agenda. So, so thank you for giving me that opportunity to promote the conference. Kamini, did you have something uh, you'd like to add? What do you think was the, the main thing that's led to your success? Yeah, I, uh, for me, it was, it's a collaboration with the key stakeholders. Uh, ensuring that we are all talking to each other and you know working with each other and also the integrated system with the Ministry of Health, accessibility, political will of course and leadership and 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 having a easy to follow requirements and processes that that's key for us here. Great, thank you. Um, we have another question which is which has just come in. Um, uh, for all, all our presenters as well, can you please name the most challenging situation in COVID times that particularly prevents uh, accessing vulnerable or hard to reach groups? I know this is an, an, an issue in Vanuatu, which is, you know, an, an island country. There's always challenges. What what did you see being as the biggest challenge? Yeah, I think with, you know, the having having the, the system um digitize is, is is has its own uh, challenge so like you mentioned we have island island um, group of islands so their access to telecommunication access to uh, the network is is still an uh, ongoing issue and this is something that uh, you know the government is working very hard to make sure that uh, people have access to to uh, to the services um mm. But also, I, I would like to add that we have our own, you know, the cultural um, uh, issues that we have uh, for information for the audience. We have about uh, over 100 languages, so 
mm. communicating all these issues to, to people will, will be, you know, some people will be hesitant in, in you know, uh, receiving all the information that we, we are providing, given that uh, information needs to be translated into three uh, different languages before we can communicate to them. So we have our own challenges, but I guess that the issue of uh, uh, ICT networking and all that is, is uh, something that uh, is mostly um, um, uh, experienced here. Mm. Mm. And in Bangladesh, I mean, a much, much larger country, but what, what are your challenges at reaching uh, hard to reach communities? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Uh, during the COVID-19 situation, uh, uh, we uh, face uh, different challenges. Uh, we don't have any so much hard to reach area, uh, especially in rainy season. Uh, we, uh, in Howard area, we have an, uh, few hard to reach area and few uh, hilly region. Uh, in uh, the perspective of that, uh, we have an, uh, a lot of register office uh, very near to the uh, uh, people. So that is not a matter. So COVID-19 uh, situation, uh, you know, uh, uh, Bangladesh tackle properly. Uh, that fear actually uh, getting them uh, not to go outside uh, during COVID-19 situation one or two months. After that, we actually handle this situation. Uh, in Bangladesh, our tele density is very high and internet penetration is also high. So people can uh, use uh, online birth and death registration from their home as well as their uh, very near digital center. So that's all we got regarding. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, how many did, what challenges have you faced? Um, I, I it will take me some time to think about that one. But I mean, for Fiji, we have about 21 BDM offices all over Fiji. So, uh, and we also have uh, mobile registration. Uh, so, down and all that, we had an office in that area. I didn't see uh, a huge impact uh, for it. Uh, but challenging would be the financial implications. I guess uh, some people would have, you know, uh, had. had have had financial issues uh, a lot, uh, stopping them from accessing uh, BDM office or the birth uh, certificates uh, reprints. Yeah. That, that yeah. I see as a challenge. Okay, uh, I'm just having a, a look. There's another question has has come in around the potential impact, and this might be a, a question for, for Nazaria from a statistical point of view. The potential impact of underreporting of births since the start of COVID nineteen. Okay. Uh, in terms of, uh, as I mentioned in the in the presentation, we have underreporting, and at the same time, uh, the parents are, as well as the informants of death are allowed to have ninety days. Uh, gestation period to register the birth and death. So as a result, we have a very uh, very low number of uh, registration of birth and death. And only I think after July, the numbers are coming back to us at almost uh, uh, the same level that we have been getting for 2018 and 2019. Uh, but the under-reporting is still uh, there because the 90 days uh, extension is still valid until now. But I think the extent is less uh, than the one that we faced last year. So there yeah. are less under-registration now as compared to the early period of the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm. I, I think you raise a very important issue, which I think particularly development partners will be needing to think about in their forward planning is there'll be backlogs, there'll be registrations that haven't occurred um, during the COVID situation, and, and that work will come, hopefully, in, in the future. Uh, but there'll also be a large number of communities that perhaps we haven't been able to reach during that time. So uh, thinking about what kind of support um, countries might need to capture the registrations that have been missed over the 12 or so months that we've been in this COVID situation, I think will be an important thing for development partners to consider going forward. Looks like we're almost uh, out of time. Um, as you can see, it's now dark here. I'm about to go home and have my, my hot cocoa. So um, I think I should also mention that today's session has been videoed and will be available uh, online to view later. And of course, to promote um, the Get, a, Get In The Picture website, 
www.getinthepicture.org, where you can find lots of information about civil registration and vital statistics. I'll hand back to you now, Tanya. OK, well, thank you so much, Jeff, and, and to all of our speakers. I think this was really interesting and it was very enjoyable to almost almost be together again. Um, yeah, so we put a few links in there and Jeff also mentioned it. We really hope that you will uh, maintain in the contact with the CLS work and uh, we hope to see you again in person, hopefully, not too in the not too far distance. And thank you so much, Jeff, for excellent moderation and to all of our speakers. It was really nice to see you all. OK, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff.